War. A curse that has been with humanity throughout recorded history, and doubtless long before that. From the very moment human feet first walk the earth, in time to come, dare we hope that it will be any different? Imagine a world of the future where the peoples of Earth have put away all the weapons of war, only, ironically, to find themselves under attack from a completely new menace. Invaders from another world. These invaders, called outspacers, would find the disarmed Earth at their mercy, were it not for a technological marvel of passive defense, the Protec bubble. Under the shell of reflective energy, Earth can begin to rearm without fear of outspace weapons, without fear of the horror of war. Or can they? In time of war, there is a fear that goes beyond that of the gun, the bomb. Far more insidious, it's the fear that eats away at the society from within. The fear that there is no one you can trust. What can you do when your neighbor, your best friend, or even your family may very well be the enemy. Sci-Fi Radio presents an adaptation of Philip K. Dick's short story, Imposter. All but military traffic has been halted between Earth and her outposts. Outspaced needle ships continue to make hit and run attacks throughout the area, destroying medical and civilian ships alike. Central Command believes the outspacers are making concerted efforts to break through Earth's protect bubble to get to our civilian population. Once again, the Governor General's message for today be strong, be alert, be silent. Infiltration is death. In local news, the project, as Jericho Labs has come to be known, is hosting dozens of luminaries this week. Mary, turn that the damn thing off, will you? Representing the elite positive combat labs from across the planet will be in attendance for seminars. And weapons demonstrations, and I have to smile and shake every one of their hands. Oh, they're talking about your work, Stan. I know. Work. I've got to take some time off. I think I've earned a rest. Ten years is a long time. And the project? The war will be won without me. I'm really beginning to think the news channels altered dispatches to make it appear the outspacers are right on top of us. Oh, now, Spence, don't say that. You know, what I'd like to do on my vacation... I'd like to take you on a camping trip in the mountains near here, where we went that time. Remember? <laughs> I got poison oak, and you almost stepped on a gopher snake. <laughs> Sutton wood. Well, those woods burned not more than a week ago. Some kind of a flash fire. I thought you knew. That's right. I forgot. And they didn't even try to find the cause? Mm -mm. No one cares anymore. All they can think of is the war, the outspacers, the needle ships. Well, how can we think about anything else? Those little ships coming, screaming out of the night sky at us? There hasn't been a major ground attack since the Protect bubble went up. The whole planet's safe under that shield. So we just sit here, under the blanket. Every lab on the planet is working on a weapon that will get us back to the high ground. My positive combat project is looking better and better. It's the main reason for this gathering. Still, those ships. I know. Like the sword of Damocles over our heads. Mm. I'm tired of it, too. All I want to do is take a long rest. But I guess everybody feels that way. Almost seven. 
I hope Nelson isn't late. He's not. Here comes his shuttle now. You want your umbrella? No, the jacket's enough. I'll see you later. Try not to work beyond your shift, Stan. Hello, Spence. Hi, Nellie. Oh, we've got a new rider today, huh? Uh, yeah, Spence, this is Major Peters. He's catching a lift with us today. Major? Mr. Olam? Well, Nellie, heard any interesting news? <clears throat> the usual. A few out spaceships here, another asteroid abandoned for strategic reasons. Oh, it'll be good when we get the project into the final stage. Maybe it's just the propaganda from the news channels, but in the last month, I've gotten weary of all this. Do you think the war is in vain, Mr. Olam? You are an integral part of it yourself. I know. It's just everything seems so grim and serious. No color to life. I don't remember seeing you at the project before, Major. Were you just... I'm not with the project, Mr. Olam, but I know something about what you're doing. My own work is altogether different. I'm with the government, with the FSA. The security organ. Oh, so you're looking for enemy infiltration in this region? As a matter of fact, I'm here to see you, Mr. Olam. See me? Why? I'm here to arrest you as an outspace spy. Grab him, Nelson. No, All right, wait, hold wait, on wait, right wait, there. Wait, Just wait, hold on just a second. Give me your hand. Nelly. There's no need for the gun, Nelson. Can we kill him now? Nelly. I think Why? we should I think we should kill him now. I need to ask him some questions first. We can't wait. You've got the destination coordinates plotted. Punch them in. Get us out of this damn rain. And you can't just... Nelson, shove the vid screen around in my direction. Chief of Security, Central. Olam has been arrested, Chief. He's in my custody. Well, that's a load off everyone's mind. Any complications? None. He entered the shuttle without suspicion. He didn't seem to think my presence was too unusual. Where are you now? On our way out. We're moving at maximum speed. cleared the storm. You can assume the critical period has passed. That's him sitting next to you there? Yes, sir. Hmm. All right. I've seen all I want. Major, you've done something that will be remembered for a long time. They're preparing some sort of citation for both you and Mr. Nelson. That's not necessary, sir. How much danger is there now? Is there still much chance that he'll... There is some chance, but not much. My understanding is that it requires a verbal key phrase to trigger it. We think he was programmed to speak the phrase under a particular set of circumstances. Anyway, we have to take that risk. Uh, I'll notify Moonbase that you're coming in with the prisoner. It's best we land the ship outside, beyond the base. I don't want to put the facility in jeopardy. Take whatever precaution you deem necessary, Major. Uh, Major, we're nearing the protect bubble wall. Chief? I heard. Punch in 1138. That's your designation, up and back. It'll get you safely through the protect bubble. No communication beyond the bubble till you reach the moon base. Central out. I'd give anything if we could just get it over with. Take it easy. Keep 
keep your eyes on the monitors for stray needle ships. But he just sits there, staring. You don't think that he's... No, he's just confused. Olam? Olam, look at me. I've got some questions. Mary, my wife, she'll tell you. We can just call her here on the vid screen. It won't take... Sit back. He was trying to signal the outspacers. No, no, my wife. I have to let her know. Sit quietly, Olam. I have some questions. There's not much time left. What? You know where we're going? In an hour, we'll land on the far side of the moon. There's a team of technicians waiting there for you. Immediately after we land, we'll be turned over to them. Your body will be dissected and destroyed. Do you understand me? My God, I can't believe you. It's inhuman. Why? Can't you tell me? Yes, I'll tell you. Two days ago, we received a report that an outspace ship had penetrated the protect bubble. The ship carried a spy in the form of a humanoid robot. The robot was to destroy a particular human being and take his place. But why would... Inside the robot was a U-bomb. Our agent didn't know exactly how the bomb was to be detonated, but a standard tactic for robots of that sophistication is to use a particular spoken phrase, a certain group of words. The robot would live the life of the person he killed, entering into his usual activities, his job, his social life. He had been perfectly constructed to resemble that person. No one would know the difference. You're not making any sense. The person the robot was designed to recreate was Spence Olam, a high-ranking official at the most advanced military research project. Me? But... Because this particular project was approaching crucial stage, because so many of the combat researchers would be attending the demonstration this week, the presence of an animate bomb moving toward the center of the project... But I'm Spence Olam. Once the robot had located and killed the real Olam, it was a simple matter to take over his life. We calculate you were released from the ship eight days ago. The substitution was probably accomplished over the last weekend when Olin went for one of his walks in the hill. But I'm Olin. Nelly, don't you recognize me? We, you've known me for 20 years. We went to college together. Hell, you and I were roommates for two years. Uh, stay away from me. Major, would you keep him away from me? Stay seated, Mr. Olin. Listen to me, Nelly. Stop. I don't want to hear anymore. You killed the real Spence Olin. You... Machine. You're wrong. I I don't know what happened to the... But but the robot never reached me. Something must have gone wrong. Uh, maybe the ship crashed. Major, I'm the same person I've always been. You were manufactured to look just like him. This is my body. These are my hands. This is my face. I was born with it. I can prove it. Just take me back to Earth. An X-ray examination. A neurological study. Anything like that will show you. Or... The ship. Maybe we can find the crashed ship. I am, Olam. I know I am. If you just let me prove it, why won't you let me prove it? The robot would be unaware that he wasn't the real Spence Olam. He would become Olam in mind as well as body. He would not only look like him, but he'd have his memories, his thoughts and interests, perform his job. But there'd be one big difference. Yes. The bomb inside the fabricated skin and bones. The bomb waiting for the trigger phrase. That is the essence of the new Spence Olam. If I were the robot, I would have screamed the trigger phrase when you first grabbed me. You weren't programmed to know the trigger. You were intended to speak the words at the right time and place. That's why we're taking you to the moon. They'll disassemble you and remove the bomb. If the device should explode during dissection, it won't matter. Not there. We're getting close. We're in the guide path. You have to let me prove myself. Oh, look, I see them. The techs, the demolition team, they're, they're waiting for us. They're going to rip you open, yank off your arms and legs. What gives you the right? You can't. Auto telemetry engaged. Pilot verification display on. Override disabled in four, three, two... Stabilizers deployed. Caution. Surface travel requires life support. 
There's the squad. Listen, I can prove I'm Spence Olam. Get the base doctor. Bring him here. Watch him while I get into my pressure suit. Don't wave that gun at me, Nellie. What happened? Why did you turn against me? Shut up. Just shut up. Major, do we have to stay around while they work on him? No, we'll be gone before they start. We'll be out of here in a moment. Give me the gun. Get your suit on. Wait, hey, what about me? Robots don't require oxygen. Okay, I'm ready. Then yank that safe lever and let's get the hell out of here. No! If you open that door, I'll die. Open the door, Nelson. Please, Nellie, I'm your friend. I'm begging you. You're no friend of mine. You're right. I have no need of air. Go ahead, open the door. Oh, look out, Major. He's reaching for a gun. Keep your hands where I can see them, Olam. I have something for you. Shoot him! Olam, take your hand out of your coat very slowly. I wonder how far you two can run. Run? Just the slightest twist here and... Uh, there. You have 15 seconds to live. Oh, Major! You were wrong about the trigger phrase. No, 13 the seconds now. The lever, Nelson. Go! Decompression, danger, decompression. If I can just hold my breath and, until the, the lever. <laughs> That's it. Run, you bastards, and just keep running. Let's see. Uh, pilot assist display. Return plotting. There. I've got to get back and prove who I am. An unusual situation for Spence Olham, wouldn't you say? It seems that there are those who believe he is someone or something else. And they believe it strongly enough to want to destroy him. After narrowly escaping death on the moon, Spence now guides the shuttlecraft back towards Earth he faces a formidable task, that of proving his true identity to his one-time friend Nelson and to the mysterious Major. How can he do it? And do they really want to know? Computer assist, vid screen on, local grid. Activated. Hello? Mary. Spence, where are you? What's happened? I can't tell you now. Listen, I have to talk fast. They may break this call off any minute. Go to the project grounds and get Dr. Chamberlain. If he isn't there, get any doctor. Bring him to the house and have him stay there. Have him bring equipment, x-ray, fluoroscope, everything. Spence? Do as I say. Hurry. Have him get it ready as soon as possible. Are you all right? Are you alone? Alone? Is anyone with you? Has, has Nelson or anyone contacted you? No. Spence, I don't understand. Everything will be all right. I'll see you at the house within an hour. Don't tell anyone anything. Get Chamberlain there on any pretext. Uh, say you're very ill. Spence, I'll we... explain when I get there.
Jack's Chamberlain shuttle in the drive, all right. Uh, no police speeders. Mary's done it. Oh, not in the front room. Mary must have taken him back to the kitchen. Chamberlain will fix this. He's been with the project since the day it opened. He'll prove me right. He'll stop this madness. Come on, Mary, come on. Oh, Mary. Spence. We've been waiting for you, Olam. Major? No, you don't, Major. Uh, hold it, Olam. Uh, run, Spence, run. Uh. Come back to the house, Olam. There are security men all around you. Listen to me. We'll catch you very shortly. Apparently, you still believe you are human. I am human, you fool. I am, Olam. Your call of the woman indicates you're still under the illusion created by your artificial memories. But you are the robot. You are the robot, and inside you, the bomb waits. Any moment, the trigger phrase could be spoken. By you, by someone else, by anyone. When that happens, the bomb will destroy everything for miles around. The project, the woman, all of us will be killed. Do you understand? I could have proved myself with Chamberlain. I could have crawled out of this hysteria. How can I do it now? How can I do it alone? The robot. The real robot never got to me. It must have malfunctioned or crashed. Crashed. Crashed and burned. Burned. Sutton wood. Mary said the woods burned. The ship came in too hard. It crashed and burned in Sutton wood, setting the whole forest on fire. Just over this hill, and I should be able to see the whole range. Sun's coming up, Olam. It's only a matter of time. We'll catch you. We have orders now to destroy you on sight. We'll have to take the chance that the bomb will detonate. Every available security officer has been ordered into the area. The whole countryside is being searched inch by inch. There is no place you can hide. Just a little more and... Oh, Lord. Oh, ash, black and gray ash everywhere. The prevailing winds are from the south. The fire would have started here and been pushed north. So the outspace ship should be somewhere just below the crest. There. There. A reflection. That's it. Don't move, Olam. Major, wait. Wait. Don't fire. Look over there. Just below the crest. I've found the outspace ship. Over here. I found it. No, don't shoot. I found the needle ship down there in the clearing. Good. Let's wrap this up. I knew I'd find it here, the burned wood. Now, do you believe me? You'll find the remains of the robot in the ship. Look, will you? There is something down there. Well, shoot him. There's no need. Wait. To... I'm in charge. Don't anyone fire. Fletcher, go down and check it out. He killed Holm. Well, shoot him. Any minute he might kill us all if the bomb goes off. Shut up. Fletcher, what do you see? Well... It's a needle ship, all right. I've got to see. Stay in front of me, Olam. Keep your hands where I can see them. Major, there's something beside the ship here. Yeah, well, move the brush back. It's a body of some sort. A body? It's a bent, twisted in all directions. The robot. Oh, God, look at the face. It's... it's my face. I can't believe it. You were telling the truth all the time. The robot never reached me. It was destroyed when the ship crashed. You were all too busy with the war to wonder why an out-of-the-way wood suddenly caught fire and burned. Now you know. Nelson, don't tamper with the body. I want to find the bomb. If it didn't go off after this crash, then I'm sure not going to set it off just by turning this... Oh, oh, jeez. What? The chest is ripped open. That thing would have destroyed us all if it had lived. We owe you, Olam. This must have been a nightmare to you. If you hadn't escaped, we would have... Well, 
I knew the robot had never reached me, but I had no way of proving it. When we get back to the station, I'll get into the computer main and clear your name. It'll take care of everything. Oh, punch in a vacation for me, will you? I think we might work out a month's leave for you. You could take it easy. Relax. Right now, all I want to do is go home. Right. Whatever you say. Nelson, quit moving the body. I think I see the edge of the device. Don't touch it. It might still detonate. Let the demolition squad take care of this. There's something metal here. What are you doing, Nellie? Be careful. Oh, here it is. Oh, I, I got it. But that's just a chunk of metal, just a part of the... Uh... Oh, no, it's not. Clean the blood off and you can see it's a knife. This is what you killed him with. An outspace needle knife. You murdered him. You murdered my friend and left him here beside the ship. Shut up, Nelson. Don't say another word to him. No. This can't be Olam. I'm Olam. How could that be Olam? If I'm... If... Stop, Olam. Don't say it. If that's Olam, then I must be an imposter. When the enemy is capable of duplicating a human form to the last detail, then who indeed can you trust? Not a scientist named Spence Olven, who, as we have just heard, came to realize that he couldn't even trust himself. Our cast for Imposter featured Dwayne Fail as Spence Olven, Nance Williamson as his wife Mary, Matthew Scott Carlton as Nelson, and Miles Muchler was the major. Other character voices were by Rick Spiegel and Oscar Wills. The original story, Imposter, was written by Philip K. Dick and adapted for sci-fi radio by Jay Helton. Our director is John O. Williams. Associate director was Rick Spiegel. All music and sound effects were created by Ron DeIlio at the studio of Audio Visual Associates in Euless, Texas. The series producers are Kevin Singer and Ron DeIlio. Support for Sci-Fi Radio has been provided by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is James Edward Kerr, inviting you to join me soon for our next venture into the imaginary worlds of Sci-Fi Radio.